answer some of the questions that have come in through our YouTube channel. Now take a look at this here in um, Jersey Guy asks, uh, would a bad EGR valve affect my Jake brakes? Well, that one could be a little bit complicated. Um, in theory, the EGR system and the Jake brake system are two separate pieces to the puzzle, um, but they're all controlled by the engine controller. So uh, I suppose there's a possibility that if you had a malfunctioning EGR valve uh, that may derate your engine, reduced horsepower, uh, that may affect your uh, engine braking capabilities. Um, typical engine brake is going to be a, a situation where the ECM is going to open your exhaust valve on the compression stroke to release the compression from that cylinder and effectively brake the engine. Um, now on some of these newer vehicles, you're getting into a situation where uh, the VGT or variable geometry turbo is part of that equation. So the variable geometry turbo can close off its veins and create back pressure in the exhaust system. So if the engine isn't operating optimally, uh, there may be some effects uh, from your uh, engine controller that's saying, hey, we can't do this. Uh, on another note, the EGR system, uh, exhaust gas recirculation, uh, takes your exhaust gases and runs it through a cooler uh, and that cooler sends that uh, recycled exhaust gas back into the intake manifold. The, the theory with EGR is they need to control the combustion temperature. Uh, too low and you have particulate matter in your exhaust. Too high and you have the NOx gases that they're trying to get rid of. So the EGR is controlling the combustion temperature. But if you have something go wrong with your EGR valve and maybe your EGR cooler fails, uh, that comes in through the intake manifold and out the exhaust directly into your VGT turbo. So the potential there is that the VGT turbo may not be able to function properly based on carbon buildup or debris hitting it, and that could ultimately affect your uh, engine braking. So Udu Brunning asks, I have a diesel common rail engine. Thing is, I have new OE injectors, the cylinder head has been reconditioned, but on idle after five minutes it fills the sump with a gallon of diesel. No leaks on fuel rails or injector piping. Well, without, without more information, it, it's going to be kind of difficult to say what the specifics of this one are, but basically um, when you're looking at fuel contamination into your engine oil, uh, there's several places that you can get it. Um, you can get fuel contamination from an overfueling injector. So we can have a, we can possibly have a bad injector right off the bat. Um, any injector seals or O-rings can leak into the uh, crankcase. Um, any of the connection tubes or lines. A lot of times the injector goes in and there's a connection tube that comes in to feed the high pressure fuel uh, to the injector. A lot of times those injector tubes are one time use. Um, so that can, that can potentially leak there. And then the other thing is any type of uh, supply pump or transfer pump that would be attached to uh, driven off the crankcase or the camshaft, uh, any of those can actually leak into the crankcase as well. So hard to say without more information, but those are all possible places to get uh, fuel in your crankcase. One other possibility that I can think of off the top of my head would be potentially if you, if you just have an engine that the rings are not sealing and it is not firing that cylinder, maybe it's getting fuel past the rings down into the, to the engine. Um, you know, when we're talking uh, five minutes with a gallon of fuel, uh, should be pretty easy to see where that's coming from. Uh, potentially put some fuel dye in that fuel and run it for just a, just a little bit and check and see where that dye is coming out. That may give you an indication where that's coming from. But keep us posted what you find. This one in from Jackknife TV. He asks, the problem I'm having is I'll make partial boost and then out of nowhere it'll climb to 40 PSI where it's supposed to be. You can even hear the difference. The only thing I could think of is either the actuator isn't moving the vein or the veins get stuck. Good question. Um, it's going to be related to your turbocharger, no doubt, um, but there's a couple different things that could be going on there. Typically, if an actuator fails, it just doesn't move. The actuator is done. It doesn't. It's not intermittent, so it can kind of rule out a completely failed actuator. 
But if you get um, uh, veins that get carbon and debris built up on them and they stick, or um, maybe your uh, nozzle ring gets some damage to it, uh, that will make it so it, the, the actuator may have a hard time moving it and it may act erratic because of hey, it can't go, it can't go, and then all of a sudden it goes, kind of like you're seeing with uh, low boost to 40 PSI boost. Um, so very common to have uh, fuel system issues or EGR issues uh, cause excessive uh, combustion gases uh, along with potential um, coolant from maybe failed EGR cooler, uh, builds up debris on the working components of your turbocharger. Uh, it gets them either sticky or damaged from, from that situation. Uh, the other possibility could also be uh, your ECM controls the turbocharger. Now it reacts based on sensors that are uh, feeding input into the ECM. It takes that input and says, I need to make an adjustment based on this. Um, so you may have a uh, sensor on your engine that's given erratic signals, and that may be causing your turbo to go from uh, uh, 20 pounds of boost to 40 pounds of boost intermittently like that. But most likely, uh, this problem is going to be related to your turbocharger, um, either uh, veins sticking, uh, nozzle ring uh, built up with carbon. Uh, that's the first place I would probably check, but uh, potential for uh, sensors to be erratic as well. So Robert Torres asked, any way to clean up the cooled EGR before it gets into the intake side of the engine? Intake manifold and IMAP sensors getting all dirty with carbon buildup. Um, he's suggesting like a DPF on the EGR exhaust after being cooled. So some sort of filter in there. Hmm. Well, what we found is that um, a few things are going to contribute to excessively dirty EGR gas. Um, and that's all pertaining to how the engine runs. Um, is your timing right? Is your fueling right? Uh, is your EGR system performing optimally? Uh, is your EGR cooler uh, performing optimally with no leaks? Um, for instance, um, we've got customers that have uh, regular scheduled maintenance programs that they clean their uh, DPF DOCs, they take the EGR system completely off the engine, clean it out, make sure that everything is operating optimally, and sometimes multiple times a year. And they say that that reduces their overall maintenance cost on that engine significantly. And I believe that's probably half the battle there. Uh, the other thing, you want to make sure that you're doing your maintenance, uh, using the proper oils, uh, keeping the maintenance on time, and changing your injectors before they fail. Um, injector failure is something that takes a while for that to happen sometimes. As the holes get larger in the injector and it doesn't atomize as well, your combustion process isn't as clean, which leads to uh, all the excessive buildup of carbon in the exhaust system. So uh, proper maintenance, um, the correct oils, change your injectors before they go bad, and uh, that will go a long ways to keeping that EGR system properly running. Thanks for watching and thanks for sending in your questions. For those of you that we answered your questions, keep us posted. Let us know what you find on that uh, so we can help everybody else to fix their engines and keep them running top notch. Uh, from diagnosis through delivery, we're Highway and Heavy Parts.